Greetings, greetings, travelers! Welcome back to another video here on Earthshine Education. As always, my name is Mike. It is a pleasure to have you here and a pleasure to be back. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the bell to get yourselves notifications when we put up future videos on astronomy, science as a whole, and of course the universe as a whole. Uh, it's been a long time. We've had some medical issues going on, and of course the national health crisis. Just lots of things going on, uh, taking us away from doing what we love, which is making astronomy content. Uh, but we are now back, and we are happy to be doing this. Uh, for this return video, we'd like to introduce you to a dual event that is rapidly approaching. Uh, that's the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, uh, along with a solstice now. If you're in the northern hemisphere, that's the winter solstice. If you're in the southern hemisphere, it's the summer solstice. Uh, we're going to talk all about that. Uh, we'll also be talking about uh, why you're, where you'll be looking uh, in the sky to see this uh, conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn, uh, why it's happening, and uh, yeah, what to, what to expect to see. Uh, so with all that said, uh, let's dive right in. So we have two events occurring. We're going to talk about them separately. Uh, we're going to begin with the big event, the main event of Jupiter and Saturn. But let's take a couple steps back here. Let's talk about our solar system. Let's talk about what a conjunction is as well. More importantly, what makes this particular conjunction uh, so great? Uh, so, in astronomy, when two objects, spacecraft, astronomical things, uh, are located in the same ecliptic longitude, or right ascension, uh, as seen from here on the Earth, uh, the objects are considered to be in conjunction with each other. In less technical terms, when two celestial objects appear to be really close to each other in the sky, we call that a conjunction. In this particular case, the two objects in question are the largest planets of our solar system, the planet Jupiter planet Saturn. Now, in reality, they are hundreds of millions of miles apart from each other, and hundreds of millions of miles away from us here on the Earth. But from our point of view, they look like they're going to be literally on top of each other in the sky, and so that is a conjunction. Now, let's talk about the solar system really briefly. Uh, in our solar system, the Sun sits smack dab, well, not necessarily directly in the center, but very close to the center, just slightly off-centered in our solar system. Around our sun, there are eight planets in orbit. Now, that number used to be nine, but Pluto was demoted from planet to dwarf planet. <sighs> Heartbreaking. Now, these eight planets orbit around at different speeds. The closer you are to the sun, the faster you go. So the fastest planet we call Mercury talk about that in a little bit. From our point of view here on the Earth, there are times where the planets appear to line up in the sky. That, again, uh, is a conjunction from our point of view. Now, let's take another step back, even further. Let's talk about the planets themselves. The word planet means wanderer or vagabond. It comes from planetes in Greek. Now, these were objects that were seen in the sky that were wandering around. The stars themselves appear fixed to all humans on the planet Earth. They're always in the same shape. Uh, we call those constellations uh, in the sky. They, they, they make those imaginary shapes, I should say, uh, in the sky. You have Orion the Great Hunter, for example, a great constellation to see uh, during the December months. Uh, we'll talk about that in a different video but these other objects appeared to wander around in the sky. These wandering objects were visible without a telescope, because telescopes didn't exist in ancient times, and people started to keep track of them. Eventually, they were given names. The five planets that were visible to ancient astronomers today are known as the planets Mercury, the, the speedy messenger of the gods, uh, Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, uh, Mars, the bringer of war, the god of war, uh, Jupiter, the king of the gods, the king of the planets, the uh, largest one in our solar system, and finally Saturn, the king of the titans, but uh, today you probably know it more of 
as the uh, beautiful ring planet there. There are many planets in our solar system with rings. However, Saturn is the one that, uh, when you look at it through a telescope, you see a beautiful ring system around it. So, as mentioned, astronomers long ago could see these planets moving through the sky, and occasionally these planets would be in conjunction with each other in the sky. However, Jupiter and Saturn, again, of these particular five, are the slowest moving ones, the ones you can see without a telescope. And when astronomers would look up and see them in the sky in conjunction, they would consider it to be a great conjunction because it was so very rare. It's easier to get conjunctions with the other planets because they're always moving around uh, at a much greater speed in the sky. Jupiter and Saturn, they, they kind of lumber through the sky from our point of view. Uh, as such, that means that the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn is a great conjunction. Now, even more impressive, this particular conjunction on the, the 21st of December will find Jupiter and Saturn so close together that if you happen to have a set of binoculars or a telescope, you're going to see them together in the same field of view. You're actually going to be able to use one, one telescope or one set of binoculars to see both objects together at the same time. Now, this particular style of conjunction with them this close in the sky, it's been a long time. We're talking the year 1623 and some, I've seen a couple of different things some people saying 397 years ago or 400 years ago uh, I've seen even other articles saying claiming this is a once every 800 years uh, of closeness so uh, this is truly a great conjunction and we're gonna have to talk about where to look to find this conjunction. Let's get to that right now. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to our planetarium software. Now that we have all that information, let's talk about where to actually look, and more importantly, when to look uh, at the sky to see this conjunction. So, we have everything set up for the 21st of December, which is Monday, uh, 2020, and we're looking south, southwest, right around sunset. So, sunset depends on where you live. I will leave a link in the description box down below that you can uh, click on a website and input your location and it will tell you exactly when the sun will set uh, where you happen to live. And so you're going to be looking around sunset. Now, if you don't know which direction you're facing, just know where the sun's rising, where the sun's setting. And that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on. The sun will always rise in the east and will set in the west. So if you know where the sun sets in your point of view, from your point of view, uh, you know which direction you're going to want to look. Now, there are some caveats to all this. You do need a clear sky. If it's been cloudy, if it's been raining or snowing where you're at, you're not probably not going to be able to see this. You do need a good clear sky. Now, if there is bad weather, you can still see this. Maybe not with your eyes, but with virtual technology. I will leave some links also again in the description box down below so you can watch this virtually online uh, through various telescopes. So if you don't have a telescope or a set of binoculars, that's fine. You can see this without it uh, with your own eyes or if you have a bad sky, you can see it online. So you can still experience this one way or another. Uh, also, if you do go outside to see this, Make sure you wear the right kinds of clothes. If you're in a place where it's really cold, if you're in the northern hemisphere where it's winter time, uh, you're going to want to dress up appropriately. I, I've told people before to go out and see different things, and they'll go out there wearing flip-flops, and I'm like, it's really cold. Oh, it was so cold I couldn't see it. Well, dress appropriately, please. Make sure you're in a good, safe place. You know, you're not endangering yourself or other people, and you're dressed appropriately for the occasion. Now, let's do a quick sky tour before we keep going. Now, our friendly companion, the moon, will be visible. It is a first quarter moon. Uh, let's take a quick peek at that uh, as we wait for the sun to set. There we go, zooming in on the moon. First quarter, bright side on the right side. This is a waxing moon. Whenever the bright side's on the right side, you see the moon throughout the daytime and then right after sunset. Uh, and it gets brighter and brighter, getting going from a crescent phase to what's called a waxing moon, a waxing gibbous, and then you get to full moon. So in next week, uh, you'll have a full moon in the sky. Also visible tonight, the night of the Great Conjunction, will be the planet Mars. Now, the planet Mars is not the primary target of our 
discussion, obviously, but I do want to mention that it's up there. So if you can see the moon, about the width of your hand away from the moon will be the planet Mars, just to the east of it. Now, planets do not twinkle in the sky. Stars twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Planets do not twinkle. Mars will look like a bright red orb just to the east of the moon. Let's take a quick peek here. There we go. Again, this is not, this is kind of bonus content. This is not the primary target of our discussion, but the planet Mars is out, so I do feel the need to mention it. Let's zoom back out slowly. There we go. Now let's take a quick peek over here to the west. You'll notice the sun has finally set, and already we can see the conjunction. The conjunction has been happening this whole time. All right, here we are again, looking directly to the west. The sun has fully set. We are looking at the conjunction. You'll notice the software is not too happy with this because both Jupiter and Saturn are labeled and the labels are on top of each other. Uh, they are very, very close to each other in the sky. Let's take a quick zoom in here. Let's take a peek. If you were to look at Jupiter and Saturn through a telescope, this is what you would see. You would actually see the planet Jupiter and the planet Saturn next to each other. That's really, really, really cool. Don't know why it's blinking like this. Let's see. Maybe we need to... No, the sun's setting a walk. There we go. Sorry about that. Let's get rid of the blinking. And we're locked in on the planet Jupiter. So, tonight, the night of the Great Conjunction. This is what you see. You see the planet Jupiter with its four what are called Galilean moons, named after Galileo Galilei, Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto. Ganymede, interestingly enough, is directly in front of the planet. So if you look at it through a telescope, you can see this blotch along the planet. It's actually not along it, obviously. Uh, it's above the planet from our point of view. But uh, Ganymede's right along the planet, so that's really, really cool. But just further west, you see this ringed planet. Well, Jupiter has rings as well, by the way, but they're just not as pretty. You can't see them from here on the Earth. Saturn's rings, however, you can definitely see from the planet Earth. And it looks something like this. So this is the Great Conjunction. The fact that they are both this close to each other in the sky is the Great Conjunction, and that's, that's just going to be incredible to see. Uh, if you've never actually looked at these objects before, uh, they all have very particular colors. As I mentioned earlier, Mars does have a very reddish, kind of orange hue to it. Jupiter will look very bright white. Meanwhile, Saturn... Meanwhile, Saturn will be more of like a golden color. And so it'll be a little bit dimmer than the planet Jupiter, but you will be able to see Saturn and Jupiter together in the sky. You can see right next to my mouse. You will also notice that it's very close to the horizon. And so there's not going to be very much time for you. So you really want to be out around sunset, around that's you know around five o'clock for some people. Might be a little bit earlier than that. Might be a little bit later. Depends again where you live. But you want to be out uh, right before sunset. You can probably see it even before the sun's fully gone from the sky. You're only going to have maybe an hour or so to see this, depending on your horizon. But yeah, this is it. Uh, this is the Great Conjunction. And I hope you really get to see it with your own eyes. And if not, again, in the link to box down below, you will see uh, links to be able to see this online. Uh, no matter where you are, you will get to see this one way or another. Okay, let's talk briefly about the solstice. Now, if you've never paid attention, the sun actually changes position throughout the year. Not just daily, as it rises and sets, but I mean distance from the horizon. During the summer months, the sun is up really, really high in the sky, so you get longer and longer days. During the winter months, the sun is very low in the sky, so you get shorter and shorter days. Uh, over a period of time, you will eventually get to the point where you have a peak in both of those. So the sun is either the highest it can possibly be in the sky, during the middle of your summer, or the lowest it can possibly be when you've got your winter 
deepest part of winter. And that's the solstice when it's at its peak, at the maximum point, maximum altitude, maximum height, or the minimum. Let's describe that by loading this up real fast. Here we go. Here's a look at our sun. Obviously, you don't want to stare at the sun, but this is the path the sun takes. It makes kind of a figure eight. We call it an analemma. You can see during the summer months, the sun's really, really high up in the sky. During the winter months, very low in the sky. And uh, on the 21st, when we're outside looking uh, for this great conjunction, as it turns out, the sun will be at its lowest point in the sky. It will be the winter solstice for the northern hemisphere, or the summer solstice for the southern hemisphere, uh, because again, they're opposite of each other. So here we are looking at a static image of the Earth as seen from space. Now, on the right-hand side, you see that there is equal sides of bright and dark. Uh, that is an equinox, equal night, equal day is the word equinox means. Uh, that's going to happen uh, in March or in September. And the solstice, which is the extreme point, so the either maximum or minimum uh, of the sun being in your sky, depending on which hemisphere you're in, uh, that's going to happen in either June or December. So in the northern month, uh, in the northern hemisphere, I should say, uh, June is your summer and December is your winter solstice. If you're in the southern hemisphere, uh, well, June is your winter and December is your summer solstice. So they are opposite of each other. Uh, let's put this in motion. So we'll put the video up and you'll see again, as we orbit around the sun, you'll see our tilt causes the seasons and you see the shadow kind of going back and forth. We'll just go ahead and put this to loop a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's what's going on. And so again, not only do we get this great conjunction of uh, the beautiful planet Jupiter and the beautiful planet Saturn, uh, we also get uh, the shortest day of the year if you're in the northern hemisphere, or the longest day of the year if you're in the southern hemisphere. So, two great events happening on the same exact day. All right, and that's that's it. Did we get through everything? Let's see. Uh, we discussed what a conjunction is. We talked about the great conjunction, why it's so great, and the fact that the planet Jupiter and Saturn are going to be together in the sky. Talked about where to look for the conjunction. And uh, we even talked about the solstice. Yep, we talked about everything I wanted to talk about. We really hope you enjoyed this information uh, that we've presented here for you today. And truly hope the sky will be clear for you uh, on Monday the 21st of December so that you can actually go out and see this with your eyes. Again, if uh, you have a poor view of the horizon or if you have a bad sky, so maybe it's cloudy, maybe it's raining, maybe it's snowing, whatever it happens to be for you, uh, check the links in the comment box down below and uh, we'll have some links for live streams uh, from various places on the planet uh, so you can still enjoy this incredible occurrence uh, from the comfort of your own home. Once again, if you haven't already done so, please click that subscribe button and ring the little bell uh, for new notifications. We're still a growing channel. We're trying to restart production here. And uh, so every, every follow, every subscribe, every share uh, is greatly appreciated. Uh, we're going to get back to our old way of doing things. We're going to be doing a sky update once a month. So you know what's in the sky uh, every single month and we're gonna again finally start be putting uh start putting out uh astronomy 101 videos that's what, what the goal has always been and unfortunately we fell a little bit short this year but we're gonna try again next year to get this going may you have clear skies health and love please take care of yourself take care of each other uh, we'll see you in the next video and please keep looking up Thank you.